What's up, YouTube? This is your boy for Trader Company. You guys tonight, I mean, I hope you guys are enjoying your weekend, man. We have a few things to discuss today. Um, we got a short week. Tomorrow is gonna be a bit a short day, but I also want to remind you guys that June is over. I hope you guys made a good amount of money. At the same time, I hope you guys can, you like learn all this every single day. Uh, learn something new because I know every single one of you guys that are coming to you know to trade to, to the trading world to the stock market uh if you're consistent you are a better person you are a better trader um you know be what you were before now if you are consistent again it's a matter of time that all of you guys find the success and it's all about consistency and of course you know learn from your mistakes so definitely want to go over a little few things today uh again shall we tomorrow the market closed early, I believe, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And I believe uh, after hours is going to be like at the 5, 5 p.m. Eastern time. So it's going to be very, very dry tomorrow, low volume. I believe that we, it might be even, even maybe a red day. Um, the reason is, like I said, you know, I believe people that has been since last week, they're probably going to take profits. Uh, you know, big money is going to relocate, it's going to repositionate. So, of course, you know, a sell-off is more likely than, you know, than a run-up because there is not going to be a problem. Uh, I personally, I wouldn't be trading tomorrow. Most likely, I'm just going to be watching, observing, and probably, you know, just dropping some guidance out there. But I don't think you're going to see me, you, you guys want to see me trading tomorrow. I mean, also always, you know, I'm there going to for questions, you know, just let me know, uh, tag me. But anyways, uh, let's go about what I have on my watch list. Definitely uh, something important that I want to show you guys is that I've been eyeing this these setups for a while now. I did told you guys that the market needs to, I believe the market still needs, a, it has another leg down coming, but we don't know when. But I was just checking a lot of, you know, large caps, even SPY, all of them are setting up for a pullback. What I'm going to tell you is, you know, SPY, this is daily, the daily on SPY. Right. Uh, previously we had this run up towards 444, where we rejected. Right, we pull back, we retested the 20 minute or you know, very close to the 20 minute at 432 area, and we bounce. Now we did create a gap, and it's it's identically forming a double top, right? And why am I saying this? Because you know we had that rejection over there. If you go look at your four hour chart, we pretty much rejected from the same area, that 444 area, right? Uh, this is literally again, it's fitting my double top that I've been talking about for days now. Now, is it gonna play out? Because that's that's you know that's that's really the million the million dollar question. You know, patterns are like indicators. They can be uh sometimes very accurate, but at the same time they can fail. You know, they're not one hundred percent accurate. But it actually gives us a little bit more um you know bit better idea of what we can expect of the stock of the market. So in the spot, like I said, I do see this double top happening, especially now we do have a gap, right? The gap that was created on Friday. Uh, I believe that maybe or most likely will be filled this week. And again, like I said, if this being a short week, uh, I believe that people or like I said, big money, you know, us experience traders, we do know that you know, weeks like this are the ones that we don't want to size in because is a very short, you know, very few days. We only, pre we pretty much, I will say the week will start on Wednesday. So we have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And uh, not even Friday because Friday, you know, like I told you guys, I don't, I, I don't trade. And I believe most of the big traders don't trade because, you know, we have low alone. And we were right on the weekend. So we're risking. So if we take out Friday out, we only have Wednesday and Thursday. So pretty much two days out of five days, trading days, you know, it's, it's, it's very, it's very, very, unlikely that you know big money will be in this week but again that doesn't mean that opportunities can present of course you know we are traders before anything so if we do see an opportunity we will take action but uh for spy like i said i believe that we might have a pullback and at least you know fill the gap so currently uh i want you guys to watch we have supports we have a 441.33 support and we do have 435.73 support right now that is assuming that we do, we're going to have the retracement, right? We break the support, we're probably going to retest the 20 May, and then maybe 60 May, which is going to be aligning with the second support. If, for X-way reasons, the market decides to 
rally the market decides to you know have a green day i believe that it's gonna need to break that 444.30 you know previous high of the days to make its way to higher levels right we do have 448.39 and 453.60 resistance so this is our these are higher higher resistance uh again i don't think that's gonna be the scenario but we are still respecting the trend the daily trend so you know it's it, it's just a possibility a very less likely possibility but it's still there so tesla um tesla is, is pretty much having similar setup right look at the daily chart we got that you know first spike we got you know that retracement at the same area of support that we previously did bouncing from the 20 may as well and i believe that tomorrow tomorrow they did uh, deliver very nice numbers today and i believe i was just reading that the tesla got up on the you know the 24-hour trading that robin hood is offering to 275 so if that's actually true right tomorrow we actually open at 275 then you see we're pretty much going to be testing that second support second resist the first resistance that i have here and you know the idea is either spikes up a little bit higher to you know complete the double top and then pull back remember there's a gap that hasn't filled right we already got close twice and we bounced from the same area so that might be uh you know the time that we might fill the gap you know it's just a possibility but you know this is the setup that i'm watching right so look at it I mean, we, we pretty much we've been rejecting and playing in the same area or the same areas for the past weeks right just when we once once we get to break that 262 area you know we were able to break out towards 275 but we keep rejecting from the area but again the fact that it's it's uh both the 24-hour trading shows that you know we got up to 275 it's very likely that we will see gonna see that tomorrow if that's actually true then spec tesla maybe uh pretty much moving to 270 what well, we do the, the the daily the daily resistance that i'm looking right to complete the double top is that 277 right 270 pretty much 277 so that's what we want to look tomorrow for the rejection or at least if the market you know decides to pull back so now the numbers that i want you to keep an eye on right again you sort of mean the gap that's on the bottom, then the one that you talked about, that little gap, uh, it's from 241.91 to 235.42, right? Keep those numbers in mind because if we get to that area, that's the numbers that you want to look for the gap to get filled. Now, we do have resistance at 262.18 and 272.06. Again, this is assuming that. Uh, if we gap up, we're probably going to be breaking both of those resistances and, you know, be open, right, towards the 277. That's, that's you know, the bullish is night. And we actually, that's, you know, that's true. As far as support, you guys to have uh, 257.85, 253.39, and 247.51, right? So you have quite the supports to break. And and you can see how the 20 and the 60 may it's aligning to such support. So it's gonna be make it's gonna make them less likely to break easily, right? Because you already do not have only you know support area. We do also have a trend line aligning with such support, right? So that's something that you want to also keep an eye. Every detail matters, and your indicators matter, right? So keep an eye on that. That's not, as far as Nvidia, we've seen semiconductors being a little strong on Friday, and Nvidia moved nicely. Also similar setup, forming a double top. Again, if market decides to rally or push or be green, then we might most likely gonna see that double top forming for a retest for that support that we kept having, right? Nvidia has been again uh you see pretty much consolidating on playing in this range, right? It can't break higher, it just pull back, but it can consolidate for a few days, breakouts again. And it may be making a cycle until bigger news comes out. So if, until that happens, we just got to play out what we see. So the resistance is 432.18. And we need 
439.90 break of you know high of the day to make new highs. As far as supports, you do have 419.53, right? You do have 413.62 the 60 May, which is again very important. It's that pretty much aligning. And you also have the 399.44, which is pretty much the you know the end and probably the start or you know the gap. That 400 level is a very, very strong take of like a level. So definitely you don't want to meet it doesn't really want to you know lose 400s because that will be create some panic selling and you know the market can flush. As far as in Microsoft as another setup that I'm I'm actually giving an out on it. Again, the daily showing similar patterns as far as in double top. And then this is what I told you guys. A lot of large caps, especially tech, they do have similar setups. Or uh that's what I'm at least seeing. Again, these are my ideas, these are my thoughts. You know, this is pretty much what I'm looking at. That doesn't mean that you have to look at it, but I'm just you know showing what I see. So you guys have a better understanding of what might happen. I'm not telling you, remember, I'm not telling you to buy or sell anything. This is not financial advice. I'm just, you know, sharing my journey and my ideas with you guys. And I hope you guys find this useful for your career and for your trading for the week. Again, so for Microsoft, we do have that double top. Pretty much, I believe, forming, right? So we might have that push up uh, towards, you know, 350, 351, which that will be confirming the second top, right? And then the pullback. Now, something very important that I know is that if you look at the forever chart, we do see Microsoft up trending on that uptrend channel. So again, I wouldn't be surprised with a pullback and then another red. Uh, we do have an inverted head and shoulders. But you can see right here, we have two shoulders right here and we have a head. Again, this is an inverted head and shoulders because it's facing down, right? So this actually will be bullish. And in, in, you know, it kind of fits. We do have the pattern. Uh, we have the channel, uh, we have the momentum. So we will see if this actually has this continuation, right? Now, as far as numbers, you have resistance at 340.75, 345.26, and supports, you have 332.97 and 330.59. So keep an eye on those numbers. And you guys might possibly meet those numbers on the week, right? Now, as far as our swings, and a lot of you guys like some swings, I've been ha I've been eyeing certain certain uh stocks, and these are pretty much my main stocks. For all of you guys know, I'm already you know I'm still swinging MGRX. You guys know what to do. You know we've been eyeing, you know rinse and repeat. It's been a this we've been milking this cow. It's been like three times already that I sold this for profit, and I re-add on the same you know uh area 169, 180, and I will keep adding to this until the bigger breakout happens. Right, so be patient. That should pay. Uh, 168 support, 17160 May. Those are good numbers to add. And we do need that 197 resistance break to go to two dollars and plus. Right, I mean the fact that hold about two dollars is gonna strongly could like a level. So that could create a squeeze that we're actually looking for. You know, the the company already said that you know we this week is gonna be a bit important as well. You know, a lot of PRs are going to come, you know, more news. So I'm just going to keep an eye. Right. Um, another one that a bit important one that I'm actually looking at because I've been, I've been eyeing this one since last week uh, is CNTGN, right? I've been watching this one because last time that it showed this a much volume, this much, you know, momentum, you can see it spiked to 252. We're currently at 150. So the fact that we are at this level you know, it makes me think that we might have this same moment coming. Now, last time, you can see it was one day that pretty much, you know, it pulled it up. But this time, it seems that it's slowly scrolling up. You know, we did have the daily, one daily candle closing about it 200 May, which is very important. You know, that's a very bullish sign for me. And this is why I believe that uh, this is a very good opportunity. You know, we see bars stepping in, bars still remaining strong on CNDN. So even if you look at the four hour chart, right? You can see how you is being respecting the trend every time that you retest this, the 20 gets close to it, it bounces hard. So I believe that we might have that, right? I believe that possibly we might see a pullback, right? Towards uh, this support line. I hope so, because you know, having I have an ad, then I would love to add some dips to 139, 140, right? Which is gonna be probably aligning with the 20 main and you know, keep riding and swinging. Now, 
uh, this is a 10, 11 million float stock. So it's still a, it's still a very low float. So again, this is one, it's a good volume, good amount of volume. We definitely, we can see a very good movement on this. You know, the average volume is being this 2.05 million. And last Friday, it had 706.27K. So it's still below the average, right? I believe that once we get to be above its average volume, we're still, we're going to see very good movement. Right, but so far, you know, it's a good accumulation on uh, the risk reward is there for me. So this is one of my main ones I'm gonna keep watching for the week. And another one that I'm actually gonna be again, IMBS. You guys, you guys already know me. Uh, I mentioned this a while back. I've been adding dips. I will keep adding the dips because it, you know, showing this consolidation that I like. Right, we are pretty much on this support line that's been holding for a while now, and. We have very good, uh, like I said, very good ratings. And, you know, we are still, we had, you know, good guidance for the, the FDA. So we were pretty much just waiting or this company is waiting for a good approval of the AV, the FDA. And that will leave that might, uh, you know, fill the stock and push and probably fill the gap that we're looking at to the $5, $6 range. And last day to finish this video, I have AGLE. It's another stock that mine because he was a runner on Friday's closing, that chart looks pretty good actually. You know, we have that reversal, that curl up that we can see here, right? That four hour chart looks amazing. You know, we can see how he had a squeeze, a pullback, of course, and he consolidated for how many days? Almost for four days, five days in that 36 area until the breakout from 36 to 51. Uh, he retest resistance. Right, that 349, 357, and then you pull back. Now, I believe that if, if the volume is enough to break through, right, to break through this 0 0.57 resistance, uh, we do have a decent uh, room to go towards 9380 or a dollar, right? So, this is a good one to keep an eye on. It. I can definitely see a lot of buyers come in. Right, a lot of people load up that 0 0.40 level, right? So I believe that this might be a good one. Just keep an eye on this one, okay? And that's going to be it. You guys, again, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, tag me. I'm going to be pretty much just, again, checking out, observing the market tomorrow. I might not be trading, but I'll be there for you guys, okay? So don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. We have more guidance, more videos, more recaps, and more bangers. Again, we, remember, once we get done from MGRX, we will keep... I will keep dropping, you know, my, uh, you know, my uh, special editions of a stock, my main picks, and you know, we're gonna keep banking. All right, guys. Also, don't forget to check the link in the description. As we'll have the Alpha Community link if you wanna sign up to my trades twenty four seven on my guidance. Other than that, guys, have a nice night. I'll see you guys tomorrow on chat. And remember, I'm probably, uh, well, I forget to tell you guys, I might be taking a small vacations on. I'm gonna be leaving on Thursday, towards Saturday. I'm gonna, you know, spending some time, you know, going to the beach, and. You know, I'm probably gonna be, won't be trading much this week, but I'll be there. So, I guess I, I definitely you know wish wish you guys the best for this new month. I hope you guys kill July, and we you know we all kill it together. I guess so. Take care, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. What's up, guys? This is Juan Pacheco coming here today. If you guys want to start making some money and achieving those goals and financial freedom you guys are looking for, then you need to start investing in yourself. You need to start investing in knowledge. All right, so join me. To the Alpha community, I'll be there with you guys, guiding yourself to the market. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow on the market because I'm going to get you guys get some money, all right? So see you guys.